All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started here, it's noon time. Uh, good afternoon, Chamber members. I'm Patrick Cotter from PDC Engineers. I am a member of the Chamber's Board, and I'm the Chair of the Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources Committee, and I'm filling in for uh, the Board Chair, Angie Talent, today. So if you haven't already, please uh, silence your cell phones. And once you've done that, we'll take a moment here to review the names of the executive partners displayed on the uh, banners and on the slides here that you saw at the beginning. We're happy to showcase our executive partners as they are members that invest beyond their general membership dues at one of our four executive partnership tiers. Executive partners provide a critical foundation for our advocacy efforts and overall success of the Fairbanks Chamber. Let's take a moment to show them our appreciation. Okay, with that, um, I'm going to welcome Katie up to help us recognize our new and renewing members. Is Katie ready for that? <laughs> Stand by. Unless this works, hey, <laughs> it does. Sorry, everybody, welcome. We're so happy to have you here today. I would like to give a big welcome to our newest chamber members, and they are Lux Technology, LLC. They are a cutting edge audiovisual integration company focused on providing the best possible service to their Alaskan customers. And also Tanana Valley Watershed Association. Their mission is to promote and improve the health of the Tanana Valley watershed through education, restoration, collaborative research, and diverse community involvement. We are proud to welcome you both and look forward to engaging with your organizations. Thank you also to our following renewing members this week, and they are Catholic Schools of Fairbanks, MP2 Enterprises, and Tyga Ventures, Inc. Thank you for your continued support of the Fairbanks Chamber and the work that we do for our business community. And thank you all again for joining us. We look forward to this update every year, and back to you, Patrick. All right, thank you. All right, up next, I'm going to ask <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Derek Dickison to come up and lead us in the Invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the chance to gather as a community. Lord, we are so grateful for the university and the work that it does and uh, helping people to flourish and become all that you want them to be. Lord, we just ask that you would open our minds to what the speakers have to share with us today. And Lord, we thank you and ask for your blessing on the work of the chamber in this community. I ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> okay, so next up I'm going to read you here the, the board <laughs> chair report from Angie. Okay, so first up, um, I want to make everyone aware that the Fairbanks Chamber is now accepting votes for the 2022 Board of Directors. Uh, we elect one-third of our board each year, so we have uh, seven seats up this year. And you have until next Friday, October 15th, to submit your vote for up to seven of the candidates. And then each member of the organization, or each member organization of the chamber gets one vote, and the primary contact for your organization should have received an email from simplyvoting.com. If you haven't gotten that or you have any questions, um, contact the chamber office ASAP, and they will get you set up with the appropriate link. Let's see, in other news today, our Government Relations Committee heard from Sarah Obed of Doy Unlimited about Alaska's redistricting process. Um, as you know, every 10 years after the national census, the state must rebalance legislative districts to ensure that each senator and representative represents approximately an equal number of Alaskans. A state redistricting board manages this process. So organizations like the Doyon Coalition have the opportunity to propose maps, which not only have an equal number of constituents, but also try to balance the different needs of the communities involved. So with that, I will welcome Janelle up for her president and CEO report.
Okay, well, thank you, Pat, for filling in today, and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I did want to give just, a, you know, for those of you who maybe haven't been joining us at the luncheons or our events recently, just wanted to make sure you're aware that um, our board of directors did vote to require masks at all of our in-person events uh, going forward anytime you're not actively eating or drinking. And I think that in part at least came from our recent presentation from the hospital. And I know I've talked to several people who were here and, and all of us really just found it very affecting that um, those are the folks who are trying to keep our community healthy and make sure that we can get back to business despite the ongoing pandemic. And um, we just wanna be able to continue to offer these in-person events, but also doing it in a responsible way um, so we can minimize any issues. So just thank you all for being cool about that and uh, helping, us, helping us keep things moving forward. Um, if by any chance, so we did have a situation last week where we had someone who attended an event um, who did subsequently test positive for COVID-19. They called our office. We were able to notify anyone who might have been affected. And um, so I would just encourage you, if, if, if anything like that does happen, if you were to come to one of our events or a committee meeting or something like that and then test positive, to just let us know so that we can make sure to let other people know. I think that helps people feel more comfortable because they feel like I'm, I'm going to know if something does go wrong. So there we go. Uh, I did want to kind of tag on to that and say, um, particularly the presentation um, inspired a few of us to say, you know, these healthcare workers really are doing sometimes a thankless job um, and really working incredibly hard and are incredibly understaffed. So we are partnering with Explore Fairbanks to do a positive picketing event to thank those healthcare workers. So if you're familiar with our education positive picketing, we greet the teachers on their first day back to school with signs and music and dancing and donuts. Um, so we're gonna do something similar for the healthcare workers outside the hospital. This is breaking news, so if you haven't heard about it yet, we just arranged this. So it is going to take place on Tuesday, October 19th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And that's so we can hit that 7 p.m. shift change at the hospital to try to catch as many people going in and out at the same time as we can. Um, so we'll be out in front of the hospital on the middle school side of the building, the Cowles and Middle School side of the building between 6.30 and 7.30. Again, um, on Tuesday, October 19th, just waving signs and thanking them and trying to kind of show the community's support for those folks. A couple items of other news from me. So we do have two advocacy letters that we sent out recently. It's kind of been a slow period for advocacy letters as we've dealt with so many other things uh, in, in our community. But we do have two that went out recently. If you're interested, there was one about the WAMI program, which is um, the program that allows students from Alaska to study in Washington get their medical degree and then come back and practice medicine in the state of Alaska. So they get some assistance to do that. It's really a great program that brings a lot of medical staff back to the state. Um, so we supported that. And then there was also a letter about the restaurant revitalization fund, um, trying to support some of our food and beverage members who maybe we don't get the chance to engage with quite as often, um, but who have been definitely affected by the pandemic. So those letters are both available on our website on the Advocacy Actions page if you're interested in checking out the details. And one last thing, so we have, um, you'll often hear us give updates at these events about what's going on in our committees because they are really the heart of our advocacy efforts. That's where a lot of issues get discussed. People can bring forward things that they would like the, the uh, chamber to support or to be against. And that discussion happens um, amongst members who have some expertise in that area or who have a particular interest in that area. So the committee applications for 2022 are now open. If you have any interest in one of our areas, so we, you know it could be about energy, environment, and natural resources on Pat's committee or um, you know military affairs. We've got five different committees that cover different topics. I would really encourage you to check that out on our website and consider getting involved in the coming year. If you want to just dip your toe in the water and maybe not commit to it yet, you are welcome to attend any of those committee meetings as a guest just to check it out and see if it might be something you'd like to get involved in going forward. So if you are, um, we do accept those applications for committee membership on a rolling basis. 
And just to clarify something that is always confusing to people, it is the individual who applies to be on the committee and not the organization. So just so you know, we ask individuals to be those representatives on those committees. All right, so you can find that application on our website through October 31st, and that is on the committee committee's page, which you'll find in the advocacy menu. That is all I've got for today, but don't forget that you can find information about all of these things on our web website at fairbankschamber.org. I usually don't get questions during the report, but what can I do for you, Jomo? All right, cool. A little more knowledge share from the chamber today. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over officially back to Pat. All right. All right, so that brings us to our main presentation today. So the Fairbanks Chamber recognized that the University of Alaska Fairbanks contributes in a multitude of ways to our local economy. Engineers trained at UAF are better prepared than students from the lower 48. Uh, medical assistants trained at UAF's Community and Technical College are for, far more likely to remain in the interior and reduce healthcare recruiting costs. University students, faculty, and contracts support local businesses whose success benefits the whole community. This is just to name a few of the many ways UAF contributes to the economy of Alaska's interior through jobs, feeding our local talent pipeline, and doing the Arctic research which allows us to thrive. The Fairbanks Chamber has been steadfast in its support of UA and UAF because our business community recognizes the integral importance of preserving the programs and research of UA's flagship campus. Today we welcome Chancellor Dan White to give us the annual State of UAF Address to help us learn more about what they're up to. So uh, Daniel M. White has served as University of Alaska Fairbanks Chancellor since July 2017. He served as University of Alaska Vice President for Academic Affairs and Research from 2015 to 2017. He joined the University of Alaska Fairbanks in 1995 as a faculty member in civil and environmental engineering and served in a variety of capacities in the College of Engineering and Mines until 2015. Dan has a bachelor's degree in physics from Colorado College, another bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Washington University, and a doctorate in civil and environmental engineering from the University of Notre Dame. Dan grew up in Idaho Springs, Colorado, home of the Clear Creek Gold Diggers. So thank you, Chancellor White, for joining us today. And that was good. I, ha I haven't been full named in a long time, like, like 30 years, but. All right, well, I have a script, and I have a script here that's to keep me on script because I have a problem with, not, with keeping on script. So I have a script, just so you know. And it's also because I have some trivia questions, believe it or not. And they're, they're actually real questions. <clears throat> and the reason they're real questions is that apparently the word has got out uh, that if Dan asks a trivia question, that the answer is UAF. <laughs> and so I've, my cover has been blown. So I will just ask real questions, but I, the, it was a lot easier when the answer was UAF. Now I have a lot of real things I have to read. But uh, I don't have a thing, yeah. That's part of, okay. So um, thank you, Patrick. And thanks for the chamber for uh, inviting us. And, and also just thanks so much to the community. And I'm often told uh, when I'm in Anchorage 
that people are jealous of UAF because we have such a supportive community. And if you look at the chamber statements throughout history, we also have a very supportive chamber. And the chamber, this chamber, over and over again comes out and supports the university and leads the Alaska chamber in that position. And so um, that means a lot to UAF. It means a lot to the, to the UA system. Um, but for us here in Fairbanks, uh, we are really lucky and we really appreciate um, the support that we get from, from you as business leaders, um, from you as community members, and from the chamber as an organization. Okay, so, th um, so thanks. So I am going to um, just start with the land acknowledgement, and that is that at UAF, uh, we acknowledge the Alaska Native Nations upon whose ancestral lands uh, we reside. And of course, the Trothietta campus and CTC are located on Dene lands of the people of the Lower Tanana River. Um, I am not gonna talk about COVID because we talk about COVID a lot um, at UAF. Uh, every single Thursday, except this Thursday, um, I write a COVID column that updates everyone on campus about what the COVID status is. And uh, I'd invite you, if you're interested, uh, to the website of UAF where we have a, a tracker and we keep track of, of all the COVID cases and they're displayed so that everyone knows what the position is at UAF. But importantly, uh, come see us uh, at UAF. Come see an athletics event. Be sure to wear your mask. We're an all mask, all the time uh, organization, um, except if you're outdoors and you're six feet apart. But if you're outdoors and within six feet apart, you still gotta have a mask on. And if you're at one of our events, like at the Carlson Center, if you come see a hockey game like tomorrow, no, Friday uh, and Saturday against Clarkson, you gotta wear a mask inside. Uh, in the Carlson Center, but I uh, encourage you to do that and come be part of the Nanak Nation. <clears throat> okay, so let me skip that. So let me just introduce you to a few new faces. What I like to do at the State of UAF every year is just introduce um, kind of new faces on campus that you will see there or you'll see around the community. And Brock Annenson is their new Director of Athletics. Brock comes to us most recently from Black Hill State University where he was an assistant athletics director, uh, but spent time with the Denver Broncos, with the Olympic Training Center, and uh, before that was a semi-pro uh, hockey player, and before that was the all-time scoring leader uh, in hockey at the University of Minnesota Crookston. And Ana Gagne Haas, who's a mastermind behind the change in um, enrollment at UAF. Of course, UAF is the uh, in this time of the pandemic has actually began uh, increasing enrollment and we started that increase last year and Anna is our director of admissions. And of course, Forrest Kuiper, who's been a long, long time uh, firefighter at UAF is now our acting fire chief um, since Doug Schrage, who the previous fire chief has now taken on the Anchorage uh, chief, of, uh, chief of that fire department. Uh, Diane O'Brien, our new interim director of Institute of Arctic Biology uh, Waki Charles, uh, director of our Alaska Native Languages Center, and Morgan Dulian, who's director of development. And if you haven't met uh, some of these folks, I'd encourage you to do so, especially Morgan in her new position as director of development, doing a great job. Uh, Brian Ewer is, this is now just talking about a rural community development. Uh, Brian is the new dean of the College of Rural Community Development. And if you, you know, UAF has just very broad reach across the state. Yeah, including the Kuskokwim campus in Bethel, Julie Carpenter is the new director there, and Wanda Wall, uh, new director at the Bristol Bay campus. And this, this is the leadership uh, for the university, some of whom are here, and if you are here, maybe you can just raise your hand or stand up. But um, on the left, starting from left to right, is Samara Tabor, who's director of, adv executive director of advancement for the university, and so that is uh, alumni relations, development, public affairs, marketing and communications, um, I didn't miss one, did I? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's good to have them here so I can keep me honest. Uh, Nicole Conley, who is the executive officer for the university, so she gets all the really tough problems to solve. Uh, uh, Anutma Prakash, who's our provost, so she's in charge of all of the academics at the university. Um, <clears throat> Ali Kanabe is our vice chancellor for student affairs, so she's in charge of the residence halls, the student experience, the Wood Center, the athletics facilities. And Nettie LaBelle Hammer is our Vice Chancellor for Research in charge of the Research Enterprise, which is also, during the pandemic, grown. So during this 
kind of most complicated time in our history. The enrollment is now growing, and the research has grown, grown all through the pandemic and the budget crisis. So that's just really great work. Charlene Stern, uh, in the kind of the middle to the to our right of Nettie is um, our Vice Chancellor for Rural Community and Native Education. She is uh, working out of Arctic Village right now up north. And of course, Julie Queen, Julie, right here. Julie, Ali, Samara, and Nettie, and Nicole are all right here. So they didn't wave. Maybe they waved when I said their names. But um, Julie is in charge of the heat plant that also produces electricity for us and in charge of police, fire, money. All, she's in charge of all the money. Uh, so big, big job and appreciate all of their work uh, leading the university. Okay, so let's see. These are, these are hard questions and they're real questions. And so I'm going to read them. And the first one, so you, you actually have to think about this and you can talk to each other if you want. Um, I appreciate everybody that is wearing blue and gold. And there's a lot of people wearing blue and gold in here, which I appreciate. Um, but this is an opportunity to have more blue and gold. The other thing I'm not allowed to do besides going off script is I'm, I'm not allowed to throw stuff. Um, that, that met in an unfortunate incident one time when someone was innocently drinking their cup of coffee. And I threw something uh, like a scarf and it hit that cup of coffee. Uh, the person, of course, was not expecting it because they didn't answer a question. It just was an errant throw. And they wore the coffee the rest of the day. So you, you just have to go pick up your own. Oh, well. All right. All right, these, what's the question? Which college, all right, this is, you actually have to know like some college things. Which college boasts these three highlights? One, scientists in this college gathered unprecedented details from a mammoth's tusk, 17,000 year old fossil at the University of Alaska Museum of the North. They're not a college by generating and studying isotopic data in the mammoth tusk, they were able to track the movements of this mammoth and its diet uh, through the region, chronicling its life, its joining with a herd, its departure from the herd, and its ultimate demise. Okay, this happened with the, in a college. That is now the cover of the journal Science which is like the most prestigious thing in science is to be on the cover of that journal. UAF faculty, again, are on the cover of that journal through this work. I'll just say that this technique was developed at UAF by studying ear bones in fish. Okay, <clears throat> that's part of the clue. Andy Seitz in the middle will serve as this college's very first Frank and Marjorie Meek Endowed Chair. Endowed Chair is big deal. Um, we only have a couple at UAF. We just got a new one, and it's this Frank and Marjorie Meek Endowed Chair. And here's another little hint just to help out that the Meeks owned a crab processing plant in Kodiak. Okay, last hint, the person on the far right there to your right is an undergraduate student, Fane Elmore. She was named a 2021 Barry Goldwater Scholar, which is a prestigious federal um, scholarship only going to the best in the nation, uh, pursuing her career. Uh, this is for people with pursuing careers in natural sciences, engineering and mathematics, <clears throat> especially oceanography. Okay, so, oh shoot, all right. <laughs> this doesn't read right on this thing. Okay, so the question is, is this the College of Engineering and Mines the College of Liberal Arts, what's another call? College of Rural Community and Native Education, Native uh, Rural and Community Development, or the College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences. Oh, you got it. All right, right there. You're good, Dan. You need some blue and gold, so thanks, Kathy, for that. All right. It is. It's the College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences. I'll try to do better advancing the slides in the future. Okay, uh, a few milestones. The Geophysical Institute turned 75 this year, and the Geophysical Institute is where, um, well, we'll have a little bit more information about the Geophysical Institute when we get to the second um, point, but it also is the home of the Alaska Satellite Facility, which uh, Dr. Nettie LaBelle Hamer is still the director of, even though she's in charge of all of the other research. And uh, that is 30 years old, this is 75 years old, the Geophysical Institute is also the home of the 
University Affiliated Research Center. And when I talked to you last year at this time, well, last time we did these, um, I said our, our goal was to start writing bigger and bigger grants. And our goal through this university affiliated research grant research program was to get $50 million, a $50 million award. And um, so Nettie and the team set out to do that. And the DOD came back and said, we want that limit raised to $100 million uh, because we already are past the $50 million mark. So we're on our track now for $100 million for this university affiliated research center. So a really big deal and, and obviously kudos to the Geophysical Institute and the Alaska Satellite Facility. Uh, we are also at uh, 50 years for the Seward Marine Center. Of course, uh, Sekuliak is housed there. We're in the middle of uh, trying to build an $80 million dock. We're going to have our fingers crossed that the National Science Foundation is going to give us $80 million to expand that dock facility. And of course, it's right there next to the Sea Life Center, so we have a great partnership down there in Seward. Okay, I'll try to be more organized on this question. Which sport has two athletes competing in Peru for the World Junior Championships? And a hint, this is not a great hint, um, but one is already has a bronze medal. Now, uh, is it women's basketball which has a new head coach, if you haven't uh, heard, is Jesse Craig, who's a longtime Fairbankson, which we're really excited about. Is it hockey that is playing at the Carlson Center on Friday night? Is it rifle, which is NCAA's most winningest team in the history of the country? Or is it men's basketball, which is looking to run the table this year? They have some really great athletes coming in for their extra year of eligibility due to COVID. Okay. Women's basketball, hockey, rifle, or men's basketball has two athletes competing in Peru for the World Junior Championships. Who said that? All oh, right, yes, Lisa, it is rifle. They, of course, are the ones that win medals. I guess it was a good hint. Um, and we have two people, of course, one already, uh, Rylan Kessel has already won a bronze medal. Okay. Um, COVID, actually I said we weren't going to talk about COVID, but here we are talking about COVID. I just want to recognize um, the facilities, which reports to Vice Chancellor Julie Queen here, uh, has distributed this year 64,000 masks on campus, uh, 27,000 pairs of gloves, 324 gallons of hand sanitizer, 358 gallons of spray sanitizer, and gazoodles of signage. And gazoodles, if you're not familiar with that, it's from the Latin word ga, which is the abbreviation for Georgia, <laughs> and zoo, which is a bunch of animals, and doles, which really doesn't mean anything. So what that means uh, in today's terms is just a lot. Okay, so if you have not been on campus, like I said, please come and see us and wear your mask, but you can pass through. I don't know if you're familiar. I'll just walk over here. dysfunction junction by now you haven't used it <laughs> the rest of us who do use it call it dysfunction junction uh, because it's confusing but f mats came in and we really appreciate f mats for doing this came in and and made it a whole lot safer um, so if you're a pedestrian you now have ways to get across that and through that intersection and they also spruced up the whole road and and uh, put in some art and we really appreciate that f mats is contributing to the university of alaska fairbanks uh, because as a driver is still the same, you may still call it dysfunction junction, as we all lovingly do. Uh, we discovered, you know, we are a military-friendly university. 17% of our students are military-affiliated in one way or another. We're a, um, a bronze star university. We're a um, military a bronze, which is a ranking that they give for special military-friendly universities. We discovered that the way our pricing structure was that military students uh, could use their benefits, but then there was they, the benefits that the that the United States allows is not quite what the university charges. So you got to get the VA benefits, and then you got to take 50 bucks out of your pocket to make it work. And 
um, we discovered that uh, we have now lowered our pricing for military so that there's no out of pocket for military students. Any military students can come with their um, VA benefits and pay their tuition. So um, looking forward to continuing to serve uh, our military uh, at UAF. This is an interesting new program. I don't know if you heard of MOOCs. Has anybody heard the word MOOC? Okay, well, you can grab a T-shirt too because thanks for participating. Uh, a MOOC uh, stands for Massively Open Online Course. And 10 years ago, people started offering these. Harvard offered some. <clears throat> Nobody really figured out how to make money with them uh, because they're massively open online courses. They're free. Um, people have started to figure that out and, and there's these new platforms and we joined this what's called edX platform. We offer the Alaska X series of these kind of MOOCs and the way it works is anybody can take a course. It's free from the university, um, a, a certain number of courses. There's a dozen that we offer. If you want um, credit and it's not university credit, it's just a certificate that says you paid for it or that, that you took it, um, that cost you 200 bucks. And so people around the world are taking UAF, these short courses that we're offering now. And you know, just, just last year we had $40,000 worth of students who said, yeah, I, I want the certificate that says I did it. Um, so that's a benefit, but, but the big benefit in this is we have right now 15,000 students who are taking UAF's courses. And that's exposing them to the great online programs that we already have. And we have an online Masters in One Health program, and virtually all of the students in, in the full master's program now kind of came through this portal and saw what the university had to offer. And we think we'll have 100,000 people watching UAF's courses through this platform in a year and a half. And that will be 100,000 new people kind of looking to UAF for their education. But obviously we offer things uh, that we're great in, uh, unmanned aircraft, uh, alternative energy and microgrids, climate, uh, environmental change, so things we're great in. And of course, uh, through our community partnership, if you're burning electrons in this town, you might just be burning electrons uh, produced by our power plant because we have an agreement with GVEA that at times that we're producing power uh, that we don't need and they need that it goes into the grid. Uh, opened our new eSports Center thanks to GCI and, and we have teams playing. There's going to be a tournament coming up, an intercollegiate tournament, kind of part of our modernizing our student experience. And I don't know, did anybody participate in the car mincement last year? <laughs> okay. It was really fun. So last year we said, you know, we can't really offer an in-person commencement in the Carlson Center. Uh, the Carlson Center couldn't commit to us because they were still a COVID ward at that point. Um, and so, so what we did was we set up, and Jonathan and the AUP team set up a giant screen outside. All of the students who were graduating could submit videos of themselves instead of walking across stage. They got a video of themselves. And everybody drove up like a move-in, like a drive-in theater. And all the parking lots there in front of the Patty Center were full. Uh, everybody was in their cars. Lots of people were sitting in their trucks and lawn chairs, and it was a whole bunch of fun. And then the cars drove around campus, and you can see in the background there in front of the College of Natural Sciences and Math that a lot of faculty came out and cheered them on, and they drove, drove around in their cars uh, or their pickups. And so a, a great time was had by all. Uh, Jennifer Tilbury, of course, um, received a, uh, a significant grant, millions of dollars, to um, improve student success at the university and get students um, into their programs sooner. And of course, Michelle Stalder Chamber uh, awarded her with the Bernice Joseph um, Education Advocate Award. She has served UAF, CT, well, served UAF for more than 40 years and is uh, director of CTC, I appreciate that. And Tracy Martinson on the right is our, our new director of environmental health and safety, and she's in charge of all of our COVID operations. And, and like uh, Jomo was saying, or um, or Patrick or Janelle the, uh, earlier that it's dealing with COVID and being char in charge of that is a tough job right now. Um, NACTEC uh, or the FNA, the Fairbanks Native Association has partnered with us on um, uh, community uh, workforce development, new program. Move in day, my, my, maybe my favorite, maybe my second favorite day of the year when all students moved in, our dorms are full. 
Uh, we have uh, double occupancy, so if students are allowed to live with somebody this year, they weren't last year. They still have a full-time masking requirement, um, and so far that's turned out well. We have very few uh, cases in the residence halls, um, about the same number uh, that we had last year, and last year uh, we had only single occupancy. So students are doing their part in keeping each other safe. So this, this is, has it, who's participated in one of the, so we have a few traditions at UAF, and one of them is starvation gulch when they light off some really big fires. And you've participated, has everybody participated? Yeah, they're a whole bunch of fun. Incidentally, um, this is one of our traditions, but um, kind of, I have to caveat it, because the tradition has always been that the chancellor lights the fires. <laughs> and. Uh, I lit the fires the last several years. We didn't have it last year, but previous years. And there were mishaps uh, unrelated to me. <laughs> well, they were related to me because, you know, the cardboard came flying out of the fire and it, and it hit me once. <laughs> the, the cause of that was unrelated to me except that I started it. But anyway, the point is, this year when they said, okay, I said, I'm ready to start the fires. And they said, Dan we don't need you to start the fires anymore. And I said, but it's a tradition. And they apparently have a new tradition. <laughs> it's like the script. <laughs> I'm not allowed to light the fires anymore. Maybe they'll start that some other day. But anyway, we had 1,000 people, almost 1,000 people come. And everybody had to wear a mask at Starvation Gulch outside. And everybody wore their masks. And it was a safe um, environment that people had a lot of fun at. Uh, Things we have to do for, you know, mental health. Everybody needs to see people. We're a people organization, and, and this was pulled off, and I appreciate that. And, of course, rankings at UAF remain high nationally and internationally. Still have uh, some of the best online bachelor's programs in the country. Um, have been ranked uh, for um, both uh, nas internationally against the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, we're ranked as a national university, which in U.S. News and World Reports is an important distinction. So continuing to be a highly ranked nationally and internationally university. This is a, these are just four students, but they remind me that we have a four-year scholarship program. And one of the things, and this was instituted through admissions that I mentioned, Anna Ganya has and the team there, is that students need a commitment of, of funding for four years. If you're gonna get a scholarship, I don't wanna know in two years, I gotta reapply, I might not have the money. And so we said, we're gonna guarantee you your scholarships for the next four years so you know what your finances are gonna to have to be. And, uh, and that's called the NANUC Pledge. And then we have, that was for merit-based students, and then we have another one called the NANUC Commitment. Uh, again, a long-term pledge to students for their career. Um, and that's a needs-based. And so this has really moved the needle. We have 1,000 students now, approximately, on, on this program. Four-year, we're committed to their um, finances for the next four years, so. Big deal for us. Okay, I am totally not in the script because I can't figure out where I'm supposed to be. But I have one more question here. Maybe I have two more. All right, <clears throat> clue number one. Who is, this is, this is actually hard. Um, clue number one, a pair of researchers, all right, the question is who's funding this work? But I'll give you some hints. Okay, a pair of researchers at the Geophysical Institute received funding from this agency to study heat emissions from Alaska volcanoes and of volcanoes around the world. Okay, somebody is paying us to do work on volcanoes. That's the cut to the chase there. Number two, a Geophysical Institute, this is not about the Geophysical Institute, except it is, because I keep reading it. The Geophysical Institute research professor is on the science team for a mission to Venus, funded by this agency. He's not actually going to go to Venus, but they'll send some stuff to Venus. <laughs> Geophysical Institute scientists, this is number three, um, specializing in remote sensing, worked with this funding agency to make synthetic aperture radar data useful in the response to weather-related disasters such as Hurricane Ida. Okay, so is it NOAA, National Oceans and Atmospheric Administration? Is it the National Science Foundation? They do probably care about volcanoes. 
Is it the Department of Defense or is it NASA who sends rockets out into space? What do you think? Do I have to give you more hints? I mean, because NASA sends a lot of stuff out into space to <laughs> places like Venus. Patrick, you have no blue and gold on, so what do you got? It is NASA. At the end of this, you may get yourself some blue and gold. <laughs> this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. That's right, it's NASA. Um, we have a strategic plan. Our strategic plan has uh, six goals. How much time do I got here? Okay, I have to get it uh, wrapped up. Modernizing the student experience, solidifying our global leadership in Alaska Native and Indigenous Studies, achieving Tier 1 research status, which is a really big deal, and, it's, and we're very close, which we're really excited about, transforming our intellectual property and commercialization enterprise so that we are building companies that are producing jobs here in Fairbanks, Embrace and grow a culture of respect, diversity, inclusion, and caring because everyone belongs at UAF. And revitalize key academic programs as we expand our opportunities. Can, can you play that video real quick? I think, do I, yeah. This is just a little video short that was made about this particular strategic goal. This is the trailer for UAF strategic plan goal number three, achieve tier one research status. I'm Doni Brethart, a professor in biology and wildlife and an Arctic researcher. And I'll be presenting with Hayo Eichen, director of the International Arctic Research Center. Folks at UAF do amazing research. People come from around the nation and the world for research experiences and collaborations at UAF. Through research, UAF faculty, staff, and students solve difficult problems, train students, and bring in a lot of money. How can we take this work to the next level? One way to enhance our research enterprise would be to attain very high research activity, or so-called Tier 1 status. Currently, UAF is classified as having high research activity, or Tier 2 status. Attaining Tier 1 is a goal in UAF's strategic plan. Our committee looked at where we are now and what it would take to get us to Tier 1. The details are in our report and are summarized in the longer video forum. The short answer is that we are doing really well already in terms of competing for outside funding that advances our research interests. Taking that next step is not as challenging as it may seem. The single best thing we can do to get to Tier 1 is to expand our graduate programs and offer better support for PhD students. Recruiting and retaining excellent faculty to mentor these students will also help us to get to Tier 1. A focus on graduate training improves overall education at UAF and benefits our state by promoting the integration of research and teaching. Getting to Tier 1 is a goal that will require investment by UAF, but the benefits, both in the short and long term, are substantial and they outweigh the initial costs. Please listen to our video forum presentation and provide your feedback when the opportunity opens. Thank you. So there is a, um, on, on UAF's website, if you just go to the Chancellor's page, um, talks about the strategic plan, and there's a little two-minute video like this for each one of the strategic plan areas, and then there is a, an hour-long, if you really were interested in it, um, uh, discussion about that particular strategic goal. Okay, so I am going to, well, I'll just, okay, I'll give you this one. And then I'm, uh, this is the last chance this is the last chance to win some blue and gold. And there's not, you know, every, there's a few people who still need some blue and gold, for blue and gold Fridays especially. And I'll thank the mayors and the borough for making that so. Okay, which UAF sport beat UAA already this season in head-to-head, -head, back to back weeks to begin their season? Yeah. God, how is this supposed to work? <laughs> <laughs> who right? Who put this stuff together? That's right. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right. Come see the whale exhibit. Thanks to the Bill Stroker Foundation for putting that up for us. A million dollar donation from the Bill Stroker Foundation. Really big deal. Had to reinforce the ceiling. The ceiling reinforcements for that whale were taken out uh, during construction for cost savings. Bill Stroker 
and the uh, uh, trusteeship, really passionate about it. We rebuilt the ceiling, reinforced it, hung the whale. It's great. Come see it. Um, come see, you know, uh, Pat Druckenmiller, the director of the museum, has uh, discovered a dinosaur nursery on the North Slope. That's um, up there at the museum, and you can come see that. Lots of great stuff happening. And I'm going to end with another video. Jackie, if we can just get to that. Let me get a couple other things here. Uh, we're skipping this because it's all true about UAF. And this is just, uh, just some messages that some of our um, sites not in Fairbanks uh, sent us to share with you. Hi, this is Dr. Solaire, and we are UAF. Can you turn the volume up just a little? We are UAF. You belong here. We are Alaska Sea Grant in Anchorage. We are UAF. You belong here. We are the Academic Advising Center. And you belong here. Hello from University Fire Department. We are UAF. And you belong here. Hello from Alaska Sea Grant in Fairbanks at the Trothietta campus. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello from Trothi Campus above the Arctic Circle in Cosby, Alaska. We are UAF. You belong here. We are the Alaska Center for Energy and Power located at the University. We are UAF. You belong here. We are UAF at the Bristol Bay campus and you belong here. Hello from Environmental Health, Safety, and Risk Management. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello from the Alaska Future Teacher Space at the UAF School of Education's Fairbanks location. We, we are UAF and you belong here. The Madniska Experiment Farm and Extension Center in Palmer. We are UAF. You belong here. Hi from Northwest Campus in Unalakleet. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello from Northwest Campus in Nome. We are UAF. You, you belong, belong here. here. Hello, the Office of Intellectual Property and Commercialization. And Alaska Santa Ice. We are located at the University of Alaska Fairbanks on the Fairbanks main campus. We are UAF. And you, you belong here. Hello from the UAF College of Liberal Arts on the UAF Trophyetta campus. We are UAF. Hello from College of Fishery and Social Science and Lena Point Juno. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello, this is Bristol Bay campus in Dillingham. We are UAF. And you belong here. Hello from the Custer Creek Campus in Federal. We are UAF and you belong here. Hello from Alaska Sea Grant and Kodiak. We are UAF and you belong here. Hello from Rural Student Services in Fairbanks, Alaska. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello from the Rasmussen Library. Rasmussen Library. Rasmussen Library. We are UAF. We are UAF. We are UAF. We are UAF. You, you belong, belong here. here. <laughs> Hello from Tulane Field Station. We are UAF. You, you belong, belong here. here. <laughs> yeah. Hello <laughs> from the School of Education in Anchorage. We are UAF. And you belong here. Hello from UAF Community and Technical College in downtown Fairbanks. CTC Paramedicine and Fire Science at the old U Park building in Fairbanks. CTC Northern Military Services at Allison and Fort Weaver. CTC Process Technology at the Pipeline Training Center in Fairbanks. CTC Aviation at the Aviation Technology Hangar in Fairbanks. Now House Lab School in Fairbanks. UAS CTC Hospitality. Hello from CTC Automotive, Diesel, and Welding Programs at Hutchison Institute of Technology. We are UAF. You, you belong, belong here. here. So we're here with the Pacific Marine Energy Center from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. We are UAF. You belong here. 
here at the Panama River Test in Indiana. Hello from Alaska Sea Grant in Petersburg. We are UAF. You belong here. Hello from me, campus, which is anywhere you are. We are UAF and you belong here. Okay, well, um, thanks again uh, for all the support that you give to UAF. And um, I think there's probably enough if you don't have a t-shirt or if you don't have a, uh, uh, a scarf and you'd like one, go ahead and grab one. The t-shirts are organized in size, so if you don't get one that you want, um, let me know and we'll get you the right size. But wear your blue and gold. Um, be proud of this university. We're proud of our community, and, and thanks so much. Well, thank you, Chancellor White. And I will just say I particularly appreciated that he checked the time and just self-edited. Nobody does that, so appreciate that. Um, so thank you, Chancellor White, for being here. Thank you all for coming to hear the, the presentation. I, I will admit, I did prep people last week. I said, I'm guessing there may be some scarves on the line, but I don't think, I t I don't think I'm the one who ruined your, your trivia, so. <sighs> Um, all right, well, it's time for the chamber pot. So if your ticket number is called, please be sure to tell us the name of your organization uh, that you represent and who you are. So the first one we have today is an LEO light and mini first aid kit, and that is from Usabelli Coal Mine. And that goes to ticket number 599-297, 297. Ta-da! <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, and the next prize that we have is a beanie from uh, Interior Gas Utility, and that goes to ticket number 321, ending in 321. <laughs> All right. So I, I have a feeling that the 50-50 winner may also be from that table. Um, it was a light day for the 50-50 today. So we, the 50-50 uh, is $7 today. <laughs> and that goes to ticket ending in 305. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Sporting a scarf as well. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us today. To give you a bit of a preview, next week we have a presentation from the Small Business Administration, and that's about their, specifically about their COVID-19 relief programs because there are still funds in some of the programs, and we know that some businesses have struggled to figure out the application or to understand why they might or might not be eligible for those funds. So please help us spread the word to any restaurateurs or other food and beverage uh, folks that you might know in town who might benefit from the opportunity to directly ask some of their questions to a representative from the SBA. So it's, like I said, not a community that we tend to get a lot of interaction from because normally at lunchtime they are, you know, running their restaurants or <laughs> doing other important things. But, but this is really kind of a cool opportunity that we can get that person in the room. So please help us spread the word about that. And um, we thank you for coming today and we will see you here next week. <laughs>